All right, welcome to part C of our ordinary least squares formulas and calculations. So we already saw that the red line uh, is a much better fit to the data, at least when you use the criteria that you want to minimize the sum of these squared residuals. Now, there are other ways to find the best line, but in this class, that's what we're going to stick with. The most common method is of this ordinary least squares minimizing the sum of squared residuals. And so um, we calculated that the sum of squared residuals for the red line was 17.65. And um, make all that a little bit bigger here for us. So 17.65. And um, of my blue line, my guess line was 50. And so you can see the dramatic difference between uh, the fit, the goodness of fit uh, between the two. Now, there are a few other things that we need to get to with, with formulas and calculations here. And um, these are just the steps that I go through in my class when I teach this. And we've done all this. We, we calculated the best line using these formulas. We calculated the predicted values, or the y hats. And um, we calculated the residuals of the four observations of our line right here. And then the next step that I always go through in my classes is adding the residuals up. And what will always happen if you add these residuals up, let me sum them, you're going to get zero. That's just a consequence of this formula that uh, you're going to get zero when you add up the residuals, when you minimize the sum of squared residuals. Um, now, I did mention that I was going to show you uh, something on this line. So before I forget, let me do that. Another thing that is just a consequence of using this uh, ordinary least squares formula to minimize the sum of the squared residuals is that um, the line always goes through the mean of x6 and the mean of y8. It's always going to happen. I mentioned that before. But another thing I want to uh, show you is this formula for the uh, y-intercept. Why is it the average of y minus the slope times the average of x. Really quickly, um, if I go multiply 6, the average x, which is right here, so we're starting at the blue, big blue point, and I multiply um, 6 times the negative of the slope, 6 times the negative of our slope, which was negative 0.884, 6 times that is going to say, let's go 6 over and then up how much? Well, we've got to start at 8 and we've got to go up to 13.3. And so all it is doing is using the slope times 6 to go up. It's like rise over run equals slope. Uh, this is slope times run equals rise between those two points. And... Um, that's how you get the y-intercept. So we start at the um, average x and the average y, and then we go over and up to find the y-intercept. That's what that formula means. Play around with those numbers. You'll see what's going on there. Now, um, if you add up the residuals, you always get 0, if we found out. Now, another calculation that's, that's common to do in regressions is called the standard error of the regression. Now let me just calculate this real quick. If we know the uh, residual sum of squares, let me just copy that over here um, so I don't have to keep going back between the sheets. The uh, residual sum of squares is um, paste special values. Okay. If we take the residual sum of squares, divide it by n minus 2, n is how many observations I have, which is 4. So n minus 2 is 2. So I'm just saying 1 half times my residual sum of squares. So let's take this uh, equals 831 divided by 2. 
and then take the square root of it. So let me take the square root of that. It equals SQRT of that. This is what's called the standard error of the regression. It's a number of about three. What does it mean? Well, what it means, and even though it's not quite equal to that, if I have such a small sample size, see that n minus 2 is hurting us here, um, since n minus 2 is only 2. But in general, what that standard error of the regression means, it gives us an idea of the average size of the residual. It's not technically correct, but it's the way to think about what it means, is that if I use this red line to predict values, then what's the size of the error going to be? The answer, about 3 standard error of the regression. It means it's a common sized error that you're going to make if you use this regression for prediction. Around three is a, is a way to think about what it means. Um, technically, mathematically, people might uh, have a problem with that interpretation, but I'm more interested in you knowing what, you're, what things mean um, than technically, you know, kind of understanding a, a good understanding, gut feeling is what I call it, of what things mean that's not wrong uh, and sometimes I'll give you both ideas what's technically right and what's a way to think about it so that's the standard error uh, a, approximately what might be the size of a common prediction error in this equation prediction error so uh, another common calculation is the total sum of squares look at the formula for the total sum of squares here it's exactly the same as the formula for the variance of uh, data, except you're, we're not dividing it by n or n minus 1. So it's just like you're calculating the variance. So a common way that I will calculate the total sum of squares is by calculating the variance and then multiplying it by n minus 1. And I'm just going to do it that way right now. But the gut feeling, what's total sum of squares? It's a measure of how much variation there is in my dependent variable, my y, what I'm trying to explain. How much is that varying up and down, above and below its mean? And so the number itself doesn't mean much. Uh, it's just kind of a benchmark, as we'll see in a second. So total sum of squares, I'm, I'm going to calculate it as, like I said, equals the variance of these numbers, the price, but I need to multiply the variance by uh, times n minus 1, or 3. 38, total sum of squares. So that's just a benchmark measure of how much variation there is in the data. Now, another measure of what happens in a recess recession is called the explained sum of squares. Now here's the relationship that you need to always remember, is that if I take the residual sum of squares, which we calculated to be 17, Point, uh, six five, and I add it to this explained sum of squares, the total, you guessed it, is equal to the total sum of squares. Total sum of squares. Now, if you've had a statistics class and you've done analysis of variance, you've calculated things like this, residual, estimated, and total sum of squares. Rather than calculating the est explained or estimated sum of squares, it's easier to say if the total is 38 and the re residual sum of squares is 17.65, the total minus the uh, residual has to give me the explained. And so that's it's the easiest way to calculate it. That's what I, the way I'm going to do it. Equals 38 minus this residual sum of squares. And that tells me it's 20.34. Why would we want to do this? Well, to calculate uh, r squared, r squared, let me calculate it and then we'll explain it and you'll see what it means, is if I take the explained or estimated sum of squares, 20.364, and I divide it by the total. I'm just going to do that. Equals um, g39 in my spreadsheet divided by 38. Right? 0.53543. What does that mean? All we're doing is asking, out of all the variation, the total sum of squares, out of all the variation in the dependent variable price in this case, how much of it can we explain ESS versus how much of it can we not explain 
residuals, right? So residual is how much we cannot explain in our data. So this is just saying that we can explain 53.5% of the total sum of squares, which is the total variation. We can explain 53.5% or 0.535 proportion of the total variation in Y, and we can't explain the other 47% or 46.5%. Anytime you see R squared, that's all it's telling you is what percentage of the variation can we explain. And so I'm going to come back for one last part here and uh, clean up and calculate this other part called the residual sum of squares.